everybody in the chat. Make sure you say good morning to everybody. Tell us where you're from. Tell us where you're at. Jessica, good morning on here. Scott from Michigan. Logan, what's up, brother? We've got Manuel on here. Lisa is driving. It looks like she's about to make a left-hand turn. Somebody's either chasing her. I don't know what's going on in the car, but it looks pretty serious in there. So we're just... We're excited that she is a speed racer over there. Good morning, Facebook world out there. So <clears throat> I'm from, I am calling from Nashville this morning. I had a great time yesterday. I spoke with Coach Burt. We did a webinar yesterday on the top habits of the top 1%. The top habits of the 1%. Coach threw me for a loop. He's like, right before the, the coaching webinar, he goes, Brock, I got an important call. So at any given point, I might have you like just chime in for a little bit and run it. Well, the thing is, is I never taught the habits of the 1%. So I didn't even really know what the, what, what I was going to be saying. So of course the phone rings, Brock, you got it. You got it. I'm like, yeah. All right, guys. So the next one is going to be, so it was pretty entertaining, but we, you know, we got to think on your, on your feet. You got to think on your feet. So, uh, and then I had a great event with Jim Morris here. Um, it was called the love language place. The bar was called love language. We really didn't believe it. Wendy's like, is it really called the love language? I'm like, I don't think Jim's making it up. So we did take pictures of it because there is a place called the love language and it worked out really well met a lot of great people it's all about networking and today we're, we're going to meet an amazing person i was doing some um some some kind of behind the scenes on abigail but before i get into abigail i always forget our affirmation today everybody our affirmation for your first time being on here, you'll catch on very quickly. For everybody else, let's all chime in and say together, something good is going to happen to me. Something good is going to happen through me. So my name is Brock Zivan. I'm a life coach, a business coach, a real estate agent, and a dad. No dad stories today, just more um, business stories, coaching stories. Met some really, really amazing people here in Nashville and on our call yesterday with the top habits of 1% of people and what they do. But today we have a special guest, Abigail. And Abigail, as I shared with you, she is calling from Israel and it is 315 over there i'm pretty sure because i double checked it out i hope so but uh i was like good afternoon to her this morning and she's got six kids i also want to say it's pretty cool we have we don't usually have this so she would be our first first person from israel also our first person who has a number one amazon bookseller on raising healthy kids she's going to talk about that today and what she has done and the education behind what she has created and the book she has done i'm huge into kids and one of the things about this abigail is we really never even officially met so when we go through and we comb and we talk to people when we do this show it is just amazing to me that I get to hear so many unique stories and I was reading your story. I'm like, wow, she's done this. Wow. She's got this and just all the amazing things you've done and what you've done for children with ADHD, dyslexia, and children are such a huge component. Obviously I have two kids, a four-year-old and a 10-year-old, but there's a lot of us on here who have children. There's a lot of us who, who are very, uh, hold this this to our hearts of w working with children or or just being able to be an outreach. And so, Abigail, I want to say to you, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you doing today? Um, thank you so much. I'm doing great. We're having a little bit of a more exciting day today in Israel. I don't know if you're all aware of the mini war that's going on here. So uh, a lot of rockets flying. So uh, you might actually just meet my six children because uh, my office is in the safe room in our house, you know, the, the, the bomb shelter, essentially. So, uh, so if there is a siren, they will all come charging in here and that'll make it even more interesting today. There was a siren wow. this morning. So, uh, so we were all kind of coming down from that and uh, getting used to- I don't to know about you all again, on I here. I, I was just saying to the audience on the, on the show right now, like, it just gave me a huge perspective of what you're going through. I'm like over here bitching and complaining like, oh, man, it's going to be a rainy day today. I was really hoping it was going to be sunny today. And here you are in a totally different element in 2023. And you're, you're like, we have a mini war going on. We might hear some rockets going off today. We're in our safe room. 
God bless you guys. I just, that just like gave me goosebumps just thinking about what you guys are going through. And it just made me give me a gut check to the head, like Brock, like, wow. Well, God bless you. And I'm going to keep you in my prayers and your family in your Thank prayers you. today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's uh, exciting so, times here. Yeah. I'm not too sure how to transition from mini war to telling us a little bit about your story. That's, yeah, that's let's talk about in a nutshell. Things. Yeah. So tell, tell us a little bit about, you know, where you are. We, we typically end, we like to click, just keep an eye on the time we type in Eastern time, about 838, 840-ish to give people some Q&A and some opportunities. So just, you know, where your story is to let us know, but share with us a little bit how, how you started this journey and, and, and how you've got to the position you are today. So my story begins in New York. I'm actually one of eight children. Uh, if you think my family is big. Um, and uh, I, uh, after just having a collision course disaster as a student in school, uh, really just hated it. I was, I was really allergic to the classroom. For some reason, I don't know, God whispered in my ear or something, I uh, I went into education. I, I felt, maybe I felt like it was such a broken system. I had to race in there and see what I could do to uh, repair it. And uh, I, my first class, I had a lot of kids that were amazing, bright, fun, intelligent. They loved to talk. They loved, they loved to learn new information. But the minute you stuck them in the classroom, they rebelled. They were bouncing off the walls. They were very unfun to teach. I couldn't figure out I'm going to do it. So for me, it was kind of like I needed to crack this code, figure out what's going on. Now, obviously, at, at that point, we'd already learned about ADHD, but I didn't, I didn't really fully buy the story that there was something wrong with these kids because I saw them at recess time, and they, they were healthy children, and they were bright children. So it, it didn't seem right to me what, what was being told to me about the kids. So I, uh, that year I developed a program for kids with, with ADHD in the classroom and the kids really started flourishing. And I did something very simple. I, I kind of put them at the center of the, of, the, of the lessons. I made them relevant. There was never a lesson my students could ask me, why does this have to do with me? Why do I have to learn this? Because I, we answered that question before we even began. And then I had their attention. And then we did a lot of movement in the classroom. There was a lot of moving around. There was no strapping kids to their seats. And uh, we flourished, students and teacher. We did great together. At that time, I met my husband. He is, um, he lets me say this, off the wall. He's very energetic. He was in uh, Austria throughout this week. And uh, he and he just flew back and he came in at five in the morning and he was up by 7.30, ready for the day. He's got more energy than anyone I know. And I always laugh to myself that like, it's possible because I loved these students. They were so interesting to me that when I met my husband, I'm like, oh, oh, I know these type of kids. And he was <laughs> it. So, uh, so the, the, base, the line of ADHD symptoms, and again, I, I, in my book really does explore the fact that ADHD kids are healthy children. And there are a lot of causes for their ADHD symptoms. One of them is the instant gratification personality. The, the kid who's the here and now kid. And they grow up, if we can raise them correctly, they're going to grow up to be inventors and, and extreme sports people. And, uh, and they're going to do great things in this world because it, and artists and, and scientists, because they notice things that the rest of us, it just goes flying right over our heads. Um, because they're so involved and present in right now. But the second you have to uh, cross the T's and dot the I's, they're gone. We lose them completely. So that would be really a lot of the cause of, of my husband's ADHD symptoms. And he's done a tremendous amount of work to, to really become a person who has developed healthy habits. And uh, obviously that part of it is genetic. And uh, most of my kids were diagnosed with with ADHD. So uh, we moved to Israel after we got married and then off to Moscow, Russia. We lived in, in Moscow for a couple of years. So I, I do speak- Just right down the road, Russian. just, just you know, right down the road, let's just go to Moscow. Let's just jump just in. Over go. There. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the thing. Like, I, I feel like we have this like ADHD kind of existence where we, we just do stuff. We, we just get up and go and- um, and that's great because we're always learning, we're always growing, we're, we're gathering new experiences, meeting fabulous new people. 
I, I have connections all over the world at this point because we've lived in three international cities. And, uh, mm. and I'm so grateful for that. Um, but I did see that ADHD is quite similar in its presentation in Moscow, in Jerusalem, in New York. And uh, when we got back to Israel after our little stint in Moscow, which I don't recommend, by the way, like, you know, we've got rockets here and this and that, but, you know, the weather in Moscow is bad. Not, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. You know, so the really the, the rock be, uh, minus 20. So the Rocky movie, the Rocky movie really holds true that it's cold, windy and snowy there. And it's just not very exciting. Yeah, almost, almost. It's not windy at all in Moscow. It's very, if it were windy, we would all have died. Uh, There's no (laughs) wind, but it is freezing. Actually, one of the winters we were there, they hit World War II uh, temperatures, minus 40. um, And uh, yeah, you, you, could, you literally couldn't step outside or any of the moisture in your face, like in your nostril and it, your eyes would immediately freeze. Like you couldn't blink because you, the moisture in your eyes had just frozen. I did step out because you know, that's the way I am, like to experience things. Right. It's funny, I, I was, was thinking the, the same thing. The <laughs> I, was thinking, I was like, I probably would do the same thing. I probably go out. I'm like, let me really see if it really freezes exactly. my eyeballs. <laughs> exactly. So most of the things I've done is due to like intense curiosity, and I love my second book is dedicated to curiosity. You got to you got to check it out yourself. Um, anyway, so so my journey to we to will put it in the chat just to let everybody know we will put these books in the chat, and you will get access to them on Amazon, so you could see them. But Abigail, I got to ask you one quick question because you I wrote down here in my notes, instant gratification personality. And the first thing I thought of was like really society in itself. And I use the internet and many times is like, like, man, how many people really do have this ADHD? Because if you go into an office or go into like an, like an area with there's like several people, especially an office space, I think of, and somebody said, Hey, did your internet go out? It's like a freaking like wildfire. Everybody's running around their head cut off because they instantly like the internet runs out. It's like we start looking, oh my gosh, maybe it's your computer. Is it my computer? Is the internet? Do we need to go to the router? Do we need to reset everything? It's like we go crazy because we don't have that instant gratification. And I think as society, we're becoming more and more instant gratifying. And I just didn't know your two cents on your studies on that because I, I see it all the time with human, like human society. Yeah, so you're absolutely right, which is why I have a problem with the diagnostic process and the diagnosis itself, because most of ADHD symptoms that we're seeing are a clash between healthy people and their environment. If we were growing up in the Amazon and we had no internet and we were just living off the the land, most of us would be a much higher focus. So as we all get Hmm. addicted to our screens and all sorts of other nasty things, we are much and much less able to focus. And so then you're looking at classrooms. And by the way, the COVID era has uh, has brought that even more to a desperate level because kids learned that they that they could sit at home in their beds and learn. And uh, and really what what were they doing? They were jumping off of Zoom and uh, look and, and trying to just get away with as little learning as they possibly could. And so that you have a long time then in Israel, the kids were locked down uh, three times. I don't, I don't, every state was different, but we had very intense lockdowns. This is quite out of control over here. And uh, I spoke to a principal just two days ago, and she said trying to get any of the kids to focus at this point is, is nearly impossible. The, the, um, mm. the behavior has completely fallen apart. They've completely lost the quorum in the classroom. Um, so if you can lock kids down for a bit of time and suddenly all the kids are exhibiting ADHD symptoms, you really have to question the diagnosis and get to the root cause of why it is that the kids are responding this way. Well, do you think with COVID, I mean, we hear a lot of it. I was in the education system for 12 years and I saw my daughter Brielle go through it and I was, I, I struggled with it in, and we were blessed and fortunate that I was able to afford private, private, like teaching with her in a social environment with other people, because I'm like, the social interaction is so very important. And I'm like, it, it, like, it, it drains me when, it, when adults want to B-I-T-C-H kids when they themselves can't even handle a zoom for like 30 minutes without going insane. And they're like, 
the kids are gonna supposed to stay in there. I'm like, you want a kid to stay there for six hours? I can't even get you for six minutes without like squirming and worming and everything else. So what do you think like the COVID, the forecast of really, I, I don't think we've really seen the effects or the peak of, of what it's done to our kids. No, definitely not. We have definitely lost a generation of kids. They, they, uh, they lost their, their faith in all of us and adults. We, we completely abandoned the children there. There was no excuse for locking them up, no excuse for locking children into abusive homes. That was the worst case scenario, but keeping them away from their friends when, the, when they were not really in danger of anything and, uh, and not having them socialize. I, I rejected that right, right out of hand immediately. And we had, uh, you know, few, a few people that we, uh, that we like minded and the children did, um, they did socialize at a lower level to keep them sane because we need human connection and seeing people through a screen, as we all know, we're all seeing each other now through a screen. It's a nice connection, but it doesn't give us that deep satisfaction that friendship does. And our children, um, all got addicted to screens. I actually, because I was in charge of getting this one on the Zoom, that's there's a lot of people here in my house. I was actually edit, doing my final edits on my first book during that first lockdown. I had to wake up two hours before my family because there's a lot of people here, a lot of people to feed. And, um, and I, I managed to get a little sliver of work here and there, but uh, we, we did a major disservice to our kids. And, um, and I saw it in the class when I went, went to speak to this principal I, I saw it in the in the school. The kids have no respect for their teachers, and their main goal right now, because they are not only crazy addicted to their screens, they also do not trust us as adults to have their best interests at heart. They are their their main goal, as far as I can tell, is doing as little as they possibly can and getting away with it. And you you cannot have an educational system where the kids are trying to run away and achievement is no longer important. And, uh, and they just want to get out of there all the time. They've seen the other side. They've seen that, that education is not particularly important. Um, and uh, they, they, the kids have given up on it and to their detriment because they're going to be much less educated than just a generation before them. Well, it's funny you say that, and I'm probably going to piss off some people on here, but well, not really so much on this call. Usually when I do a podcast, somebody will put some comments on here. <clears throat> and I think adults, I mean, when you, when you say children, I think adults try to get away with little as possible. I think they, they do as least as possible. They don't like the cost of like being successful. Um, you know, they, they, I, I had a couple of questions. People asked me like, Brock, I, I, I want to make a lot of money, but I, I want to be with my family too, but I'm not willing to like, you know, I, I, I don't know. How do I do both? And I said, well, if you could figure that out, please let me know. Like, cause I, I, I haven't been able to figure out how you be, able, it, it's so hard to be able to manage both. And it's, to me, it's balance and, and you got to work through it. Action creates clarity and understanding what works for your, 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 your environment, your family. Everybody has a different family structure, but I see more and more like 87% of people hate their job. Mondays is the highest date for in, in the United States that people have heart attacks because they're going to a job they don't like. They're around people they don't like. They get depressed. They get themselves in this in this mojo. And then they're like the lack of effort in that they, they don't feel valued at their company. And I, I think as a whole, as, as you know, you say children, and, and I think we grow into that and that becomes your norm of like, man, what can I get away with today? Like how much work do I really need, need to do today? Um, so that was, that was my, my sidebar in reference to like what triggered inside my head. Now, Abigail, when you, when you look at today and you look at society and children and adults and, and where you see yourself, like, what is that, what does that journey look like to you? And, and, and what are you, what are you hoping that, you know, with, with your books and, and, and educating people like us on here, what is, what does that vision look like for you? So my dream really <clears throat> is to return childhood to children. And uh, right now we're, we're very, very poorly serving kids. And uh, as a mom of six, I could tell you that I have plenty of experience. I get to, I get to claim this. Um, and uh, basically what we're doing is we pathologize childhood and we've stuck kids into little boxes. Are you anxious? Are you hyper? Are you sad? Are you, and then we're, we're, we're giving kids diagnoses. We have no business doing that. We should be uh, my, the, the question we should be asking 
is what's going on for you. What's happening? What's happened to you that you're struggling right now? Why are you struggling right now? And instead we're asking, what do you have? What's the diagnosis that the mighty psychiatrist has given to you? And therefore we miss the child because we're trying to solve problems. And actually it, it really goes back to what you just said. Adulthood has also become very much about getting away with as much as possible. And as a mom, I know that there are no shortcuts. You know, either mm -hmm. you're going to work at this every day, all day and through the night, and then you're gonna be able to build these beautiful relationships. We just married off one of our daughters and, uh, and she's, she's such a sweet son-in-law. And that that process is not something that that happens from magic. That's, that's every day, all day from birth till death. That's, that's what we do. And that's not something that we have in our society. So I would like to be able to kind of intervene and say, hey, let's focus back on these healthy children and look at why they're struggling. Do they have a gut dysbiosis? Look at, look at the way the kids are eating nowadays. Honestly, mm -hmm. we're taking a lot of shortcuts. We're, we, we, we're giving pills to children. That's a major shortcut because they, then they're not bothering us anymore. They're quiet. And, and as far and, and what's nice is that the doctor says that's the best thing to do for them. So we trust the doctor and we go ahead and do that. But we're also sticking them in front of TV screens and we're also giving them junk food because it's so much easier to prepare that. And who has time? Both mom and dad are working full time jobs. We're all struggling to make ends meet. And this is not from a place of blame or pointing a finger. This is all of us together. We have to start focusing on what's going on. So is a, is a child been through trauma or abuse? Uh, is a high number of children that are that are diagnosed with ADHD that have been traumatized in some way. And then we're gonna shut them down with a pill because they're making too much noise. But they're making that noise because they're calling out for help. That is their only way of communicating with us. So we had better not be shutting them down. That's very dangerous for them. Or do they have asthma or allergies, skin rashes, um, do they have headaches, stomach aches, all sorts of, of autoimmune conditions? Well, then we shouldn't be saying that's a secondary condition besides her ADHD. We might want to ask ourselves if that's what's causing the ADHD symptoms, the sheer discomfort that the child is physically feeling. And then we would really need to up our game in terms of nourishing our children. Our children's brains need a tremendous amount of nourishment, and most of them don't get anywhere near that. If they eat a vegetable during the day, it's shocking. You know, you've got a big mm -hmm. pot on your back. I got a cucumber into the child's mouth. Fantastic. <laughs> I have an apple today. We need to be doing more also physical activity. Because of the screens, our children are spitting all day long. And it's also terrible for us. I, just, I heard an expression recently, uh, sitting is the new smoking. We sit way mm. too much and it's dangerous for us. And are we checking out that? Are kids out in nature and not astroturf? Are they touching uh, a tree? Are they, are they interacting with animals? All of that really seeds their gut with, with healthy bacteria and it calms them. The green, you know, they, they paint hospitals in green because green is a common color. They miss the point. The green's lovely, but it's the green of nature that calms us. I know we used to take our kids when they were little uh, for years. Every Friday, we'd head out after school and take them out on a nature walk or a beautiful hike. We have wonderful hikes in the area. I live in a magnificent mountain range. And um, the kids would all, like, they all always complained on their way into the car. No, I don't want to go. We're going to go. And if you're not having fun, we'll come home every week. Every single week, the minute they got out of the car, they were in their element. They were happy. They were smiling. They were getting along with each other. Magical. The green of nature is magical. And I actually knew this of one psychiatrist who, instead of writing out prescriptions on her prescription pad, she would prescribe nature to the kids. Mm. So what we need to be doing is really, and, and, and I hope that I can invite people through my work, through meetings like this, to go get, get curious, get curious about what's going on. Start asking questions and find out what's going on for your child. Your child's healthy. Your child has tremendous potential. Let's stop limiting that potential and really let the child flourish. My book really provides uh, not only the main causes of ADHD symptoms, but full, full intervention plans 
that any parent could follow. Well, we put it in the we put it in the chat, everybody. If you could take a look, Logan, I appreciate you being vulnerable and, and sharing uh, on the chat as well. And a couple key key points before we end today. I, I wrote down the word relationship. John Maxwell talks about relationship is leadership. Whether it's adults, children, whatever it is. I mean, even even leading yourself. Wendy and I were talking last night after the event. And I was talking about you got to read the room before you can lead the room. And, and then it came into like, you know, are you a leader? Are you not a leader? And, and, I, and then we had a, we, we had a really intense discussion because like everybody's leaders on this, you lead your family, maybe you're leading a church, leading a school, leading, like, leading yourself for crying out loud, like leading yourself. And so um, I made that note. And then I wrote down, <clears throat> because you made a comment about like that, the childhood going into adulthood. I see it many times because when I peel the onion back and I ask people, especially my coaching clients, it's like previous experiences help make today's decisions. And they use that to like, you know, whether it's a previous family tradition you had or like something like, you, you know, I remember I tumbled in gymnastics and ever since then I've been scared of like jumping over this, like, I don't even know what it's called anymore. Cause I haven't done it. And like, since I was 10, cause I hit my front teeth and I'm like, never again, am I doing that? Why is because that experience carried over. And so in, in the final note that I wrote down is convenience. I think convenience is the biggest thing in today's society that is killing us is because we will do the easy, we will follow the path of least resistance. We will go and whatever is easy, the fast food's easier, like sitting down. Like I, I love, I wrote down sitting is the new smoking. 100%. I think obesity across the world is such a huge thing in today's society because people just don't want to be active. Like I, I, I try to do at least 20 minutes a day is, is on my to-do list. And whether I have to walk, that's, that's better than sitting down eating a bag of potato chips. Like 20 minutes is my requirement, seven days a week. I try obviously to do more and I can get it in five days a week because of my because it's important to me. But Abigail, I know we put your information on here. What do you want to leave us with today and in, in, in what you're going through? I mean, uh, I'm still like in awe. Like I, I just looked outside and I'm like, don't even once complain, Brock, because it's cloudy and foggy and rainy. Like what you're going through, you being on here, the call, managing your life, managing kids, mini war. Like wh what do you leave us with today? Well, I, I'd like to. Well, first of all, thank you for having this nice conversation with me. I really appreciate that. Um, but I, I, I'm very hopeful. I'm a very hopeful person, not only about the war. I know that sounds strange, but I, I do believe that this will pass. My my son just just finished his uh, mandatory military service. So as a mom, I'm very grateful because he's a combat soldier, um, an elite combat soldier. So I'm really glad that he's home. So that's that's really nice for me. Um, but besides for that, I do believe that uh, peace can be made and uh, that two peoples can figure these things out and uh, and and we could we can make that that happen. And uh, I know that in my area. It's, it's a mixed uh, Jewish Palestinian area. And uh, we have, uh, I, you know, I have a, a, a Palestinian uh, gentleman who cleans my house named Imad. And, and in the last scuffle we had, uh, he called me to check in on my son, who's an Israeli soldier. And he says, I'm praying for him. Can I leave him a message that he can play for his fellow soldiers for their safety, that they all come home safe? Uh, so those are when you, when you actually have person-to-person -person meetings, it's a whole lot different than what you're seeing on the TV screens, because for some reason, which I'm sure someone here is intelligent enough to have an answer for, there's this constant fear being pumped into us, and uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, because as people, person-to-person, -person, we really can make this happen, and I pray that that happens, and I know that, that there are a lot of good people around the world praying with us. Uh, besides for that situation, I do have a lot of, uh, thank you, Chad. Uh, I, um, I do have a, a lot of hope and faith with our children. I think that um, mm. they are healthy. They're growing up in a much more stressful environment than we grew up in. They, we didn't have the amount of screen. We didn't have handheld screens. I didn't even grow up with a TV. I'm not Amish. We just didn't have a TV <laughs> in the house. And uh, <laughs> And and we we so therefore we were out playing all the time. Uh, it was it was okay. There were stresses, sure, plenty of stresses in our childhood, but nothing what 
nothing like what our children uh, have to go through. And um, so we have to be more present for them, but I do believe that we can return our children to health and we can help them flourish. And every situation that we go through brings to growth. So even though the, the COVID era definitely has uh, reduced the quality of education and the quality of our children's faith in us, which is for me a bigger shame than anything else, I do believe that, that this is gonna also push us in the direction of innovating, of coming up with new ways mm -hmm. to educate. And, uh, and we could do this. We just have to pay attention, be curious, and have a tremendous amount of love and faith in our children. And, and we will it. raise a great generation. I love it. I love it. Abigail, I can't thank you enough. Guys, give her some love in the Facebook. Give her some hearts in the Facebook, some thumbs up. Zoom world as well. Uh, I appreciate all the, the the positive comments. Abigail, I appreciate you, your, your pa as Chad said, the, the passion for you, passion just for us to to grow as, as, as individuals within ourselves of, of doing, you know, doing the next best thing and doing the next right thing. And, um, and, and I love the word hope. You're absolutely so, so on point with that. And guys, her information is in the chat. This podcast will be released in about three weeks. So those that want to follow back up, it's also on the Facebook group. Join us on Brock Stevens Mindset Motivational Coaching is there for you to watch. Guys, thank you so much. Abigail, we are praying for you and your family. Be safe. God bless you all, everybody. We will be back Monday at 8.15 with Maxwell in the morning um, with me. Yes, that's me. All right, guys, have a phenomenal weekend. Be safe. And we'll talk to you later. Abigail, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye, y'all.